Uh, welcome, welcome if you are joining us, joining us again. Welcome back to the Lion of Zim YouTube channel. Uh, we don't take your support for granted. Thank you for your continued support. And to the new subs to the new viewers and listeners, uh, if you just come across this channel, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, like, share, and comment so we know what you guys uh, want us to address and uh, how to improve the channel. We are here to inspire, we are here to uh, inform each other, to advise each other, and uh, where your advice is also uh, appreciated. Uh, today I'm um, coming to you alone uh, my other half is not available for this particular video but uh, we'll see uh, in some other videos to come um, today uh, the main thing that we are going to discuss uh, emanates from uh, the inquiry by some of you uh, as to the challenges that I faced uh, while it's uh, building in Zimbabwe. Yeah, we'll, I'll just be to the point and try and uh, make it short. Um, the first thing to consider when one wants to build uh, is uh, the availability of land. Do you have the stand uh, to build on? That's one of the most important things. And uh, talking about stands, uh, if you want to buy, uh, you need to be very careful not to end up being conned. There are a lot of con, con people out there, land barons, fake land barons. So you need to be particular. One, they can sell you land that, is already, that does not belong to them or that has already been sold to someone else. So you need to do your due diligence which is make sure you have got a conveyancer make sure you've got a lawyer that uh, will uh, do the process for you a trustworthy lawyer as well it shouldn't just be any ordinary uh, lawyer out there you need to have trust and faith in that lawyer so that is very important do, do your diligence due diligence make sure the land is legit make sure if it's in town it's tightly land uh, don't end up uh, buying uh, state land uh, because uh, you might end up losing your investment in the process. So once you have got the land, uh, you need to know what building that you want. Uh, in as much as you are going to take your uh, to seek advice or to from the. Uh, draftsman who will do your plan you also need to have an idea of the house that you want to build have a sketch of the house that you want to build that is what you're going to take to the person who's going to make you an official plan to say okay i want this and this and this myself i had a floor plan i designed a floor plan and said okay i want wide the uh, passages I don't want to be ent uh, taking the bed inside in a narrow passage or I don't want to buy a fridge and end up failing to put into the house. So I, th that was one specification. I, I had the measurement for the passage that I wanted. I had uh, uh, my rooms, how big they were, and the setup of the com complete uh, uh, floor plan. Uh, that's what I took to uh, Mr. Jahampela Mkwanas, you can check him on Facebook. He's a very good guy. Uh, he did an amazing, perfect plan for me, and I'm happy. And there are some that have said, oh, can, 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 can you share your plan with us? Yes, I'm willing to share the plan uh, with anyone that wants the plan. Because uh, if, it, if you like what you see, why not? I'm happy to give it to you and then you make improvements or you make subtractions to suit your own style. Yeah, that's that's one thing. Uh, make sure you, you, your plans are done with the council. They are approved and they make sure uh, when you start building, you have got a, um, uh, the, the council uh, um, 
inspector comes to the site and inspect every stage you get a report you you pay for that is you pay for this inspection it's not much and you get a report and then before the builders move on to the next stage that is very very uh, crucial and the second uh, challenge uh, uh, faced uh, by me as uh, someone in australia was the conversion the currency back home and uh, we now use uh, the us dollar uh, and uh, the australian dollar is lower than uh, the us dollar so when you're changing your australian dollar to the us dollar you find out that you you get uh, less and uh, that was a very big challenge it's a very big challenge you had to send money through western union at times they the laws they say oh maybe you have sent too much money they want to find out why you continuously sending money and yeah, that's, that's that's another challenge that you will face especially if you are in the diaspora if you are out of zim uh, they can they, they, there are a lot of things why they ask that because they are trying to uh, guard against the uh, 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 people sending money to uh, wrong organizations uh, they are trying to guard against the money laundering so if they say your account in they ask you just be factual truthful and just answer all questions asked by whether well remit or western union because if you don't then they will uh, suspend your account and then you can't send money that will become a, a, a big hustle and um, another issue when uh, 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 service providers like the contractors at home when they, you try and contact them with the, your foreign number like for my, in my case a plus six one yeah all, all all what they think is an extra to make an extra money it's not all of them but most of them they will uh, uh, try and charge you more so before you can contact them with your number i would advise that have someone on the ground who goes there and try and find the quotations for you maybe three different quotations and you have those by the time you personally approach them you already have the quotations you already have a rough estimate of what uh, is expected for maybe for building maybe for roofing maybe for tiling you've already done that before uh, beforehand so when they try and inflate or rise the the amounts or the prices you are in a position to say no 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 i think uh, you are now overcharging me i had already done three quotations for this and this is what i got so once you show them you know what you are doing they will back off and they will give you a uh, correct uh, uh, prices that's uh, the third thing is uh, you need to have a project manager while least you can try and run things remotely uh, they need to be someone on the ground who is going to be available for the builders in, when they need cement they need uh, they need to be available for the builders when they need sand so you need that runner runner on the ground and uh, I would uh, like to refer to that runner as the project manager. He's there to manage things on your behalf. And it should be someone that you trust, trust fully. You know, it can be a family member. Uh, it can be a friend. Uh, you can hire a professional to do that for you. It's all up to you. It's your, your choice or what you want. But it should be someone that you trust. Uh, someone that you know will do a perfect job because most people get discouraged and end up not doing stuff because they they get ripped off in the process uh, by their project managers hiring a project manager does not mean you neglect uh, uh, micromanaging building even if you don't like micromanaging when you are constructing 
you need to do that make sure you know what happens every single day if they you say they need to go and buy cement make sure you see the cement is bought make sure you see the receipts make sure you do video calls and, or, and see the material make sure every day see what the builders uh, have done you know just be uh, hands-on it's a challenge on its own because uh, of another thing time difference right uh, like here we are six hours ahead so when i come back from home or from work that's when people are running around doing something when it's time for me to sleep that's when i should be calling people to say okay now you it's four o'clock or it's five o'clock we have you are done what have you done but it's already maybe 10, 11 here. I, I need to be in bed. So you find out that you have late, late nights trying to catch up with what's happening at home. So you need to be prepared because building is not a short-term thing. It's a long-term stretching thing. Even if you have the, everything ready, it will take months or, or if, not a, if not years to, to finish your project. So you need to be prepared for long hours. You need to be prepared for late nights. Uh, the next thing, uh, the next thing that um, is also a problem is skilled personnel. Skilled personnel at home, especially in southern parts. I'm talking about Blawayo here. Most. Uh, tradesmen have uh, relocated to South Africa to search for greener pastures. So people that know jobs, they are based in South Africa. And that is a fact. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's good nowadays. Uh, people in South Africa, they come and uh, once in a while and do jobs back home, uh, which is a good thing. But uh, uh, it just started that I just started seeing more of them coming back to do job, to some projects at home last year. Before that, uh, there were no uh, people coming back from South Africa, so you, you had the challenge of uh, uh, the best and the skilled manpower. And people will take the job if you say, oh, "I have a job." Someone who is not even a hundred percent sure of what he's doing, as long as he realizes there's an opportunity there to make money. They will take the job, but that doesn't mean they are going to do something perfect. So I would advise, uh, talking from my past experience, because I had some situations where I had to stop some tradesmen uh, in the middle of the, uh, the, 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 the process and say, no, this is not what I want. Uh, I want this done this way. And I already maybe lost some money there and uh, materials uh, when you once once it's it's used and then you can't reuse so what i would advise is again make sure you check you make sure you liaise with other people that have done building so that you get the best best treatment for whatever a stage of building that you are in if you need a builder, make sure it's a builder that is proven. There's a track record to say he has done this uh, here or he has done this there. And you see the pictures of the job and stuff like that. Uh, make sure they have a reference of a, a physical person. Don't just see the pictures that the builder sent because they can take houses of other people. They can take pictures from anywhere and say, this is my job. This is what I did. But in reality, it will not be the case. So just be careful, people out there. The next thing is uh, the shortage of material. Yeah, shortage of material. For example, in my case, uh, when I was building, there was a time when cement was a problem. Uh, the issue with that is the price of cement when you have to look for it now in the black market and it, the price becomes higher. Or you have to try and go to Francis Town. You have to hire a car. You have to go to Messina, hire a car. You come to the border. You have to pay, and then you find out that uh, the cost becomes higher than anticipated. Yes, and uh, also you get some contractors that do not take their work seriously. 
uh, or like with the agency that it deserves. Uh, like for instance, I, 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 myself, my personal experience, I went at the roofing stage, I paid for every cent that was needed. And then, uh, but uh, the bill, uh, the, 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 the carpenter did not have enough uh, tradesmen to, to do the job. So it's a big pro it was a big house and uh, you would only get maybe two, three, three people coming to, 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 to do the carpentry. So that was a challenge I had to uh, have serious discussions, serious negotiations and begging for them to at least try and move the job because uh, once you start roofing, you, you, there are a lot of factors to consider. Uh, you don't want rains to come before your roof is fixed. Uh, so that is a challenge, but uh, uh, you need to sit down with whoever you are, you, you are employing. Uh, you are giving the job at a particular stage to make sure at least if I have all the material, uh, what is the time frame that you are going to take uh, doing this uh, this job? So it's very important. And there are some other factors that do not, did not personally uh, affect me, but I know of friends that have uh, maybe given up or that have uh, uh, had some heartaches, you know, some pains of uh, losing because maybe the contractor stole the material or the project manager stole the material or the material was not uh, even bought in the first instance. So that's why I'm saying you need to be hands on. You need to micromanage uh, even through video calls, even through uh, live, live, uh, live, live chats. You know, you need to, 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 to make sure of that. And just be careful, even if it's family, even if it's friends, even if it's service providers, make sure they are straight and up to the task. Uh, they don't uh, end up uh, uh, conning you. And also, just to avoid maybe getting uh, a con, you need to visit the site. Just go home regularly and check. One of you, be it the husband or the wife, if you are single as well, just take time, maybe once a year, just go home and see what's happening beyond the ground. Once you are home, don't uh, spend most of your time enjoying or visiting places when the project is ongoing. Make sure you spend the day there. Make sure you know how they, the, 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 they are mixing sand versus cement and uh, stuff like that. Uh, once they see your interest in the project, uh, once they see how committed you are, uh, they tend to, to take your job seriously. But if you are home and you not, don't even monitor and uh, you are giving them the wrong impression, you are giving them the impression that you don't care about uh, your job. So, these are some of the things that uh, I thought I should share with you today. And uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for watching. And uh, personally, I would like to, 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 to give it a very big thumbs up to uh, my project, uh, people who manage my project. Uh, it was my cousin. Um, Tavis Kolite, and uh, the lady, uh, my sister, uh, who looked after the kids when we were back home and who is uh, now a part of our family, uh, Melita Kumalo, they did an amazing job. The two of them, they did an amazing job. They did uh, so much work, so much running around, and uh, I'm personally uh, feeling blessed to have them to have such people that uh, 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 will do something wholeheartedly. That's what we need. We need people on the ground that will do your job wholeheartedly uh, without any complaints, uh, but uh, make sure 
uh, they take their job as their own and they want to see you succeed yes i, I would like to thank them and also i would like to thank uh, on this video in case they see it all the contractors uh, especially the builder uh, mr peter chuma is an awesome guy I, I i would not even hesitate to recommend mr peter chuma to anyone who wants to build in Bulawayo. he's just an, uh, a guy building with his kids and uh, it's not a big company you can talk to the to him uh, he understands uh, and uh, uh, even when it comes to um, uh, finances you talk you say okay i've got so much i will pay you like this and uh, he understands he will work with you uh, to achieve what you want uh, he did that job people people think like oh maybe you, you uh, used a big company no i just used an individual who was doing this with the kids and they did it uh, to perfection and i'm happy i'm happy about the plastering that was done by mr carlos yeah, some of you have seen Carlos in my other videos. He did the plastering and the painting. Brilliant guy. Brilliant guy. He's based in South Africa. But if you have got a job back home, uh, he goes, uh, he's happy to go there and uh, do uh, your job. Uh, uh, thank you for watching. I uh, really, uh, really appreciate your support. Uh, continue uh, supporting us. Continue supporting us. And I know some of you have been asking about the doors. Uh, uh, the guy is very talented. Very talented. All my doors, all except two doors that I put in the, uh, in the, in the bathrooms, all the doors uh, were done uh, by the, uh, the, the, the carpenter. And I've given number to some that want the number. I'm happy to give numbers for whoever did anything in my house. Uh, Mr. Tsika, who did the cupboards all the way, all the way from Harare, Tsika Designs. You can check him out. He, I think he's on Facebook as well. Uh, um, the pervy, uh, the sorry, the, the the paving guys. They were slow. I have to admit, but uh, they did a perfect job too as slow as they were uh, they were doing a, a good job and uh, also who have i left behind the, the ceiling guy alfonse he also did uh, a, an amazing job I, I feel blessed i feel blessed i had challenges that doesn't mean i didn't have challenges with some of these contractors we did have challenges but in the end uh, we maneuvered uh, and uh, finish the job uh, together uh, thank you very much for watching continue supporting us uh, please like the video share the video so that is we, we get a wider uh, audience and uh, comment tell us what you want to see us talk thank you thank you for watching our videos uh, again we really appreciate uh, it's been a, a good engagement with you guys and uh, please comment and Subscribe, like, and uh, tell us the topics that you want us to discuss. Tell us the things that you want to see on this channel. Uh, we are going to do our best to try and uh, improve. Uh, for today, uh, that's uh, the way we end the videos. We hope you found uh, this video uh, very helpful and uh, informative. For today, bye.